How to Become a Health Inspector The term health inspector is a generic title that could refer to a number of different types of inspectors, such as public health inspectors, environmental health inspectors, occupational health and safety inspectors, agricultural and food safety inspectors, animal and plant health inspectors, and mine health and safety inspector. Health inspectors can also work at the federal, state and local level for both governments and private industry. Method 1 Becoming an Environmental Public Health Inspector 1. Obtain the appropriate level of education Most environmental and or public health inspectors are employed at the state or local, i.e. county or city, level, and each of these jurisdictions may require a slightly different level of education. The best location to find required qualifications is on that state's Department of Health website. We'll use New York State for our examples. Search for and go to the state's Department of Health website. On the Health Department's website, look or search for the Careers section. Look or search for careers in any inspector positions. Each state and local authority may name the position slightly differently, but it will usually always include the word inspector. Review the specific educational qualifications required by that Department of Health. In the case of New York State, public health inspectors need an associate's degree or 60 credit hours of post-secondary education. 12 credit hours of either qualification must be in the natural sciences, i.e. biology, chemistry, physics, etc. 2. Complete a public health internship. Various health departments at the state and county, city level offer internships for post-secondary students. These internships are highly valued by future employers and you should apply for internships as often as you have time available. Normally these internships are only open to students and not recent graduates. Many of these internships are unpaid, so you'll need to obtain funding via another source or budget for being a volunteer instead of employed. 3. Determine and fulfill state-specific employment policies. Some states have specific rules, based on their laws and statutes, that all civil service employees must follow. In most cases, the state rules will apply at the local level as well. New York State requires all civil service employees to take an examination based on the type of position being applied to. You can register and pay for examinations in New York State via their online portal. Examinations are then held periodically throughout the year at locations throughout the state. Once you've completed the examination, you will provide it with your score and your name will be put on an eligibility list that can be shared with the appropriate state departments. As vacancies arise, you may be considered for the position based on your score and ranking compared to other candidates. 4. Prepare for and attend employment interviews. Even if you have a high score on your examination and are at the top of the list, it does not guarantee you a job. You will also need to show your potential employer you're the perfect candidate for the position. Review any potential interview questions you may receive and practice your responses. Make sure you bring at least two printed copies of your resume with you to the interview. One to give to the interviewer, if required, and the other for you to reference while answering questions. Review the employer's website and ensure you know the proper attire to wear for the interview. When at doubt, assume business formal attire. Practice your interview with a friend or career professional. This can include the career center at your post-secondary institution. Career centers may also offer seminars on interviewing skills which may be helpful. 5. Decide if you're going to pursue certification. Professional certification is not required for environmental and or public health inspectors in the United States. Some jurisdictions, however, may require certification for some inspector positions. If certifications are not required, it is nevertheless a beneficial qualification to have on your resume. The National Environmental Health Association, NEHA, offers certifications in a variety of environmental health professions, including the Certified Environmental Health Technician, CEHT, and Registered Environmental Health Specialist, Registered Sanitarian, REHS, RS. Different levels of certification require different levels of education. If you're considering certification, make sure to apply for certification at the highest possible level that your education and or experience will allow. Method 2 Becoming an Occupational Health and Safety Inspector 1. Obtain the appropriate level of education 
The Bureau of Labor Statistics, BLS, identifies two levels of occupational health and safety professionals, a technician and a specialist. Technicians tend to work for specialists, which means technicians tend to have a lower level of educational requirements than specialists. Technicians may require only a high school diploma, whereas specialists require at least a bachelor's degree. Some post-secondary institutions in the United States offer specific occupational health and safety majors, certificates, or degrees. These degrees will usually be a requirement of certification. 2. Decide if you'd rather work for a public or private organization. In the United States, all employers must abide by the Occupational Safety and Health Act, OSHA, which requires them to provide a safe working environment for all employees. Many private organizations employ occupational health and safety professionals to ensure their organization meets all legal requirements. While the government organization, Occupational Safety and Health Administration, enforces the law, inspects workplaces and investigates incidents. 3. Review Specific Role Requirements Every organization who hires an occupational health and safety professional will have different employment requirements. Some of these requirements may be based on the level of the job within the organization, i.e. the higher the job, the higher the qualifications. If you want to work for the Occupational Safety and Health Administration directly, you can access all job postings on the Federal USA Job website. Use the advanced search on the website to look specifically for jobs at OSHA. Remember that not all positions will be called inspector, so try not to limit your search by using the word inspector. To find occupational health and safety jobs at a private organization you can use either a generic job search website, i.e. Monster, etc., or go directly to the organization's career website. 4. Decide if you're going to pursue certification. Certification, in general, is not required to become an occupational health and safety professional, but it certainly doesn't hurt. Some specific organizations may require certification, so obtaining one will increase the number of positions you're eligible for. The Board of Certified Safety Professionals, BCSP, offers a number of different certifications. The BCSP also offer a career paths in safety PDF that walks you through the different types of certifications and their requirements. The Institute for Safety and Health Management, ISHM, offers a number of certifications for professionals at the management level. The American Board of Industrial Hygiene, ABIH, offers two types of certification. Industrial hygiene is another term for occupational health and safety. 5. Apply to the jobs you're interested in. Career experts have no magic number of jobs to apply to during a job search, but you should try to be logical. Make sure you take the time to do your job search properly, don't rush. Take advantage of expert advice from career centers and reputable career websites. Make sure your application stands out from the crowd. And don't sell yourself short by making compromises. Don't limit your applications to positions you're 100% qualified for. You may have other skills and abilities that make up for the lack of specific qualifications in other areas. The majority of available jobs aren't actually posted on job websites or advertised at all. This is referred to as the closed job market and it can usually only be accessed by networking. Your cover letter is one of the most important parts of your application. Don't use a form letter. Make sure you use keywords directly from the job posting. 6. Prepare for and attend employment interviews. Once you've submitted your application you may be short listed for an interview. The interview is your chance to show your potential employer you're the perfect candidate for the position. Review any potential interview questions you may receive and practice your responses. Make sure you bring at least two printed copies of your resume with you to the interview. One to give to the interviewer, if required, and the other for you to reference while answering questions. Review the employer's website and ensure you know the proper attire to wear for the interview. When at doubt, assume business formal attire. Practice your interview with a friend or career professional. This can include the career center at your post-secondary institution. Career centers may also offer seminars on interviewing skills which may be helpful. Method 3 Becoming an Agricultural and or Food Safety Inspector 1. Obtain the appropriate level of education the Bureau of Labor Statistics, BLS, indicates that some agriculture and food safety technicians may obtain a position without a post-secondary degree, 
but as an alternative it would require previous experience instead. For this type of inspector, an education that has focused on biology, animal sciences, food sciences, or something similar are the best options. Many post-secondary institutions offer science degrees that may have specialties in agriculture and or food-related topics at the undergrad level. Degrees that are specifically in agriculture and food safety tend to be at the graduate level. 2. Decide if you'd rather work for a public or private organization. In the United States, the Department of Agriculture employs inspectors through their Food Safety and Inspection Service and through their Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service. The Food and Drug Administration, FDA, employs food safety professionals in their Center for Food Safety and Applied Nutrition. In the private sector, many agricultural organizations and food producers employ agriculture or food safety professionals to inspect and assess crops, animals, and output. 3. Review Specific Role Requirements Agriculture and or food safety professionals usually focus on a specialty of some kind, such as carbon management, microbiology, consumer safety, and import. Each specialty may require slightly different qualifications that you need to be aware of before deciding which roles you wish to apply to. The Department of Agriculture requires that inspectors pass a written test in order to qualify for an entry-level position. 4. Decide if you're going to pursue certification. Certification is not required for agriculture and or food safety professionals, but some organizations may require certification for certain inspector positions. If not required, becoming certified will definitely help your job prospects. The American Society of Agronomy offers certifications in a variety of specific agricultural disciplines. The Soil Science Society of America offers certification specifically for the soil science specialty. The American Registry of Professional Animal Scientists, ARPAs, offers certifications specifically in animal sciences. The Institute for Food Technologists, IFT, offers different levels of membership that are very similar to certifications. 5. Apply to the jobs you're interested in. Career experts have no magic number of jobs to apply to during a job search, but you should try to be logical. Make sure you take the time to do your job search properly, don't rush. Take advantage of expert advice from career centers and reputable career websites. Make sure your application stands out from the crowd. And don't sell yourself short by making compromises. Postings for agriculture and or food safety positions at the federal government level can all be found on the USA Job Career website. Don't limit your applications to positions you're 100% qualified for. You may have other skills and abilities that make up for the lack of specific qualifications in other areas. The majority of available jobs aren't actually posted on job websites or advertised at all. This is referred to as the closed job market and it can usually only be accessed by networking. Your cover letter is one of the most important parts of your application. Don't use a form letter. Make sure you use keywords directly from the job posting. 6. Prepare for and attend employment interviews. Once you've submitted your application you may be short, listed for an interview. The interview if your chance to show your potential employer you're the perfect candidate for the position. Review any potential interview questions you may receive and practice your responses. Make sure you bring at least two printed copies of your resume with you to the interview. One to give to the interviewer, if required and the other for you to reference while answering questions. Review the employer's website and ensure you know the proper attire to wear for the interview. When at doubt, assume business formal attire. Practice your interview with a friend or career professional. This can include the career center at your post, secondary institution. Career centers may also offer seminars on interviewing skills which may be helpful.